Welcome to Paranormal or Reality. We have four stories that will make you think twice about watching this in the dark. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Let's begin. Hi, this is my ridiculous story. I'd like to first say that you don't have to feel bad if you don't believe me, because I struggle so much with believing it too. I wasn't alone. My best friend also saw it, and she struggled as much as I do with not believing what we saw. I'm almost 60 years old, a wildlife and landscape photographer from East Tennessee. I'm from Townsend, which is located in the Smoky Mountains, and I no longer live at the location where this happened, but I'm still close by. On the night of the new moon in July of 2018, my best friend Debbie came over to my house around 11.30 p.m. because we were going to go up the hill from my house to an empty rental cabin to take pictures of the Milky Way over Rich Mountain. I know it was the night of the new moon because that's the best night of the month for night sky photography since the moon won't wash out the light from the stars. If you stood on my road where you turn into my driveway, it actually looks like you're turning into the driveway of the rental cabin because we shared that driveway. Straight across the street from the rental cabin is what locals have always called the shale pit. It's just an empty lot about an acre or two big. There's a family from Townsend who owns it and they use it to dig up shale for new driveways of houses. That was their business, they built driveways, but their part was just to dig it and lay down the shale. They also let the National Park bring trees there to use the space to burn them after they collected them, when we had bad storms, strong winds, or heavy snow. There wasn't a house there or any other form of structure, just a big lot with a couple of backhoes for digging. They did put a small mobile home on the lot for the owner's grandson, but that didn't happen until 2020 during the pandemic. So one day Debbie and I had taken her car up the driveway to the rental cabin. We parked right in the front, and her car was parallel to the road. The road was about 10 yards from the car, and the entrance to the shale pit was across the road we lived on, so about 10 more yards. That means 20 yards in total from the car to the entrance of the shale pit. We sat our tripods up, we each had taken a couple of shots of the night sky when I heard what sounded like tires on gravel somewhere down by the river. You have to cross a bridge over the river to get to my old house, and all the houses on that road included the shale pit, of course. I said to Debbie, Someone is down at the river. I can't remember if she heard it, when a few seconds later we heard a loud truck that sounded like it was crossing the bridge and starting up my road. It might be one four of mile from the bridge to my driveway or probably less. We could hear that the truck was going really slow. It sounded like it was really old and barely running. As it got closer, I asked Debbie if she locked her car since we were on the backside of the cabin and couldn't see it from there. She said, no, I didn't. She has thousands of dollars worth of camera gear, which she brought that night. Without speaking, we both took our cameras off our tripods and carried them back to her car to lock it. I don't remember why we brought it all with us. I think we both just had a weird feeling about that truck. I know I definitely did. I don't even know what to say, other than it sounded like it was creeping around the area since it was going so slow. I could have walked as fast as that truck was going. When we got back to her car, we sat our stuff in the back seat at the same time that the truck parked next to the cabin. It was a dark colored truck it looked like it could have been a truck from the 70s or 80s. We couldn't see who was driving or how many people were in it. Then it stopped and turned into the driveway to the cabin, which means it was also turning into my driveway. It only had two wheels onto the property when it stopped and backed up across the street into the entrance of the shale pit. Its lights were shining directly into our eyes. It just sat there with its loud motor running. Debbie asked me what the hell they were doing. I said I don't know, but they're starting to get me mad because they know they're blinding us with their headlights. I waited about ten more seconds before I reached into my pocket to pull out my flashlight. Then I turned it on and pointed it right at the truck. I had intended on shining my obnoxiously bright flashlight at them until they turned their headlights off or drove away. Well, they did turn their headlights off, so I turned my flashlight off. They didn't turn the motor off, though. This was creepy. I thought we had pissed them off since we were at that empty rental cabin after midnight while my husband was back at our house asleep. The truck stayed there for about another half a minute. Then it finally turned its motor off, then it was gone. 
Yes, I swear upon everything I love this happened to me. We didn't see it fade away. It didn't turn off like a light switch or television. It just wasn't there anymore. Then Debbie and I both did something totally out of character for two older ladies. We ran to where the truck had been sitting. I couldn't say a word, but Debbie, well, she yelled over and over. What happened to the truck? I told her to stop screaming so I could call Jack, my husband. I was hysterical and told him to get up the hill as fast as he could. He also drove up instead of walking. He was there in no more than two minutes. I told him a very short version of what had happened. He went across the street to the shale pit and pulled in as far as he could. It's all just dirt and rock. There aren't even trees there since they dig in the area. The only trees are the ones the park brings there to burn. There wasn't any of those at this time. He came back across the street and said there's nobody over there, except the two backhoes. He said, they must have left and you didn't see them. Then we explained the whole thing again. He realized they couldn't have left without us seeing them since we were standing right in front of them. So, he went back over there on foot this time, with my flashlight since it has the high beam setting on it. Again, he came back and said there's nothing there. He said he even looked inside the cabs of the backhoes just in case. There's actually a ridge above the shale pit lot, but it's vertical and about a hundred feet high. This one acre lot is literally just dirt and rock with nowhere to go or nowhere to hide even for a person, let alone a whole truck. We didn't take any more pictures and went back down to the house with Jack. I was outside with Debbie when she said, Kelly, there's no need to go in there and try to convince him of what we saw. It's ridiculous. You can't expect him to believe you. It'll just cause an argument. We saw what we saw, but nobody is ever going to believe us. We still talk about it sometimes and laugh about it, but it's not really all that funny. Because even though we know what we saw, it feels like a scary movie. You'd think the truck would turn the motor off first and leave the headlights on and then disappear. But no, it turned off the lights so we could very clearly see the truck sitting just yards from us. The motor goes off and it was like I blink of an eye and it was gone, maybe even in less than a blink. How can a truck be a ghost? I'm not sure I even believe in ghosts at all, but I saw that truck disappear. As I type these words, I full on understand how ridiculous and stupid it sounds, but I don't even believe it. It's a weird place to be in, and Debbie is in that exact same place. I believe in God, so I guess that means I believe in the supernatural since God is supernatural. I don't believe in disappearing trucks, but I saw one disappear. Our location, Yao Valley Road, in Maui, Hawaii. There was a full moon. We were in our teens. It was my four guy friends and me. We were told to park our car under a tree where someone hung themselves and the spirit would push your car uphill as long as you didn't look back. The first time we tried this, it was extremely slow, barely inching uphill, then stopped a little way up the hill. I drove back around to the spot we were at to try it again. They all kept saying, don't look back or the spirit will stop pushing us. So we didn't look back, the car moved faster, like the pace of someone walking. The car had the same jerking movements as if someone was pushing it. There were a few moments the car would completely stop and then it moved some more. We made it further down the road this time. We were getting excited. My friends wanted to do it again but with proof that I was not pushing the gas pedal. So, while I was in the driver's seat, I parked under the tree. The gear was in neutral. I had my feet hanging out of the window as proof. I was not pushing the gas pedal. The car started moving. My friends were laughing, pointing at my feet saying, hey, who knows, maybe we will go faster this time. I saw the car accelerating quickly on its own, climbing 30, 40, 50 miles per hour. We were flying up the hill, while we were all screaming with pure fear now. I tried to get my feet back inside as quickly as I could, so I can apply the brakes. Easier said than done. I felt all tangled up and a bit stuck, in that awkward position, while still steering the car. We had sharp turns, that you should not be doing at that speed. By the time I got my feet inside to hit the brakes, we were all the way up the hill, where the stop sign was. I could have hit oncoming traffic if I wasn't lucky. My friends told me they were so scared, they wanted to go to church and never do that again. 
Urban legend says there was a guy who climbed on top of his car to hang himself. So that's why he pushes other people's cars away. So they won't do the same thing. My daughter purchased an old blue Hyundai Excel for her first car. It was a little beat up, but nevertheless it got her safety from A to B, she told me one night as she glanced into her review mirror. She saw a young girl with a long white shirt sitting in the back seat. It was for just a second, and when she looked again, she was gone. She said she has seen her on multiple occasions, but for some reasons, she never felt scared, just weirded out by the whole experience. She also explained the radio used to turn on and off by itself. Sometimes the volume would go up and down. I thought it was creepy, but put it down to an old car with old electricals. Maybe she was tired, and the streetlights gave the illusion of someone seating back there. One day she was driving us to the shops. As we were chatting away, I saw the radio knob literally turn itself as the music volume went up. I sat there stunned for a moment, in disbelief as to what I saw. I told my daughter what I'd seen, and she just laughed and said, I told you this car was haunted. I couldn't believe it anyway. Fast forward a few months, she decided to sell it. The new owners called her and said they lost the keys. Then they found them in a random place. Then they called again and said the car wouldn't start. Then it started a few hours later. Just weird stuff was happening during that week after she sold it. One day she was coming out from her university when she saw a familiar image next to her new car. It was the blue Hyundai Excel. She checked the license plate and it was definitely her old car. She was really taken back as there are literally hundreds of parked cars and it just happened to be parked next to her. This only happened once. She has never seen that car again. So this story is from two or three years ago. One night on my way home from work, I took some back roads to get home quicker. But on this particular night, it was snowing and the roads were a little icy. So I was driving slower than I normally do. On this route, it has a long stretch of road that has hills and can be really rough sometimes. It has no houses or hunting camps on it or any turnoffs. It's about three or four miles till the next intersection. I was about a quarter mile down this road when I see in my rear view mirror another car or truck coming up behind me as I was going up the first hill on this stretch of road. I was about halfway up this hill when this they passed me. As I got to the top the hill, I was expecting to see them going down the hill or on the short straightway to the next hill, but I did not see any tail lights. So, I slowed down thinking they went off the road and crashed. As I was continued down the hill, I was looking for the car truck that passed me, but I couldn't see much of anything. So I stopped at the bottom of the hill and put my hazards on and got out of my truck with my flashlight. I started to walk up the hill, scanning the side of road to see if I didn't see anything. I ended up reaching the top of the hill without finding any trace of the vehicle that passed me. So, I thought to myself, maybe then one off the road on the other side, but I didn't find anything. No tracks, no skid marks, no evidence of a vehicle going off the road, or even driving on it except for me. There have been a lot of accidents on this road in the past. So in conclusion of this story, I strongly believe that I saw a ghost car that is stuck in a loop on the night it crashed. Thanks for tuning in. Watch another video if you dare.